Hi, I'm Cher Kaufman. I'm international artist and author of the Artful Mandala coloring book and the Ancient Alchemy coloring book. And I want to talk to you a little bit about my third book, Mandalas and More, a meditative drawing and coloring book for mind, body, and spirit. This is such an important book. This is a book that tells you about the process of drawing. Meditative drawing is a very relaxing um, technique that you can use not only personally, but it's something that you can use for enhancing your own creativity. For those that like to do coloring, this is the next natural step in your own bridging relaxation and observation in the world around you. Most people come and ask me about what is meditative drawing. Meditative drawing can be referred to in, in several different ways, but the way that I like to refer to meditative drawing is that place when you reach sort of like your own zone by connecting and creating a relationship with the pen and the paper. So it's not just drawing because you can doodle and you can draw and you can be mindless about how you create, which sometimes is relaxing all on its own. But what I like to teach people is about a process where you're actually connecting to what you're drawing. And the process in that space is actually the most important part of it all. The bonus is what you get at the end. The bonus of that drawing is the cherry on the top of the sundae. But really what I like to teach is what that process is because that's really where the magic happens. So in the meditation drawing, techniques that are in this book and this book is beautiful by the way that has pages that you can color that you can draw there are projects in this book there are uh, there's a whole section that's just on mandalas um, there's a whole section in the back that's about embellishing once you have become comfortable with meditative drawing and you want to add to it with color or with pencil shading there's all different ways that you can move into a space that's really more comfortable for you. Here's an example of, of one of the mandalas that's in the book here. It was, was colored by uh, Tracy Kennedy. She did a fabulous job with that. Even the coloring was done in a meditative process with this. So I'd like to just give you an introductory lesson to meditative drawing through thought process but also through an actual process. So the first thing that I like to teach people is to do a body scan. And this is just a simple ABC, something that you can think about before you do anything. And this is something you can do even before you begin to color or something that you can do even before you sign a birthday card or about to write that term paper or anything. This body scan ABC is something that you can utilize at any time. So the first thing is to adjust your body. This is also about posture awareness and making sure that you're comfortable. But more than that, it is adjusting both you and whatever it is that you're working with. So in the case of meditative drawing or with coloring, it's adjusting you and your paper. A lot of times when people are coloring, if I pull up one of these coloring books here, say you're, you're going to pick a page in a coloring book, a lot of times what will happen is that people will keep the page in the book but then you still have the binding that you have to work around and if you decide to rotate your paper at all you still have this other side of the book and it can get into the way. So I highly encourage people to actually rip the page out of their book. All of my books have perforated pages and they are super smooth easy straight lines and that's on purpose to make it easy for you. If you take that page out, you can then rotate the paper in the direction that is easiest for you. So that's really adjusting to your comfort level. Oftentimes what we do is we will physically move our bodies and keep the paper perfectly still. Like the paper has that much power over your comfort level that you will work around that paper and you'll put your wrist in your elbows in weird positions rather than simply just rotating it 30 degrees or 90 degrees and making a huge difference. So that's one of the first things with meditative drawing is to learn how to adjust your body and your paper for comfort. You wanna be in a place where you can connect easily. One of the things that I'd move into next is that B of ABC, which is to breathe. We forget to breathe. And when I say breathe, it's really both in and out. A lot of times we'll take a breath in and then we just sort of hold it, we stop. So you have to remember to breathe in 
and to breathe out. And that's usually one of the very first things that I'll ask people to do before you start anything new. So if the idea of meditative drawing is new to you, and the first time that you grab your pen, or if you're just brand new to coloring a book, is take a breath. Make sure that you're in an upright position that's comfortable. Just take a deep breath in, and when you breathe out, just let your shoulders drop down. And it's amazing how many times we don't realize that we've raised our shoulders up to our ears. So the idea is just to let them drop with an out breath. So just take a deep breath in, and just breathe out, and let your shoulders drop down. And that can be huge in creating a relaxation, a relaxation place. The third thing that I like to show people with meditative drawing is really creating a connection. So that's the C of ABC, is really creating this connection. And it's connecting you to your pen. It's connecting the pen to the paper. It is connecting you to the drawing. It's connecting you to your world. It's, it's creating a connection. And, and connection really can also be an awareness. But more than anything, I'm gonna grab a different pen here, is people will grab their pens, or even their colored pencils if they're coloring, and they grip it really hard. And I don't know what, but it doesn't bring out more wax or ink if you squeeze your pen. And so that's not really helping you draw better. It's actually limiting you. Because every time that you grip, you are gripping not only from your hand, but your wrists all the way up your forearm, and you're actually creating tension in the shoulders, the neck, and even up onto that side of the head. And the body is so amazing that it will compensate for that, and it will create something on the other side of the body to stabilize you from that tension. So something as simple as relaxing your grip on your pen can increase your awareness how you, how you breathe it can relax immediately from just having the awareness of, of how you connect with your pen and just relaxing. So ABC is to adjust yourself and your paper to a comfortable position, breathe, and create a connection with your pen to your paper. The other thing that I like to mention about the pen is that the same idea of the gripping the pen you don't want to press hard of your pen onto your paper. Your paper is just simply a receiver of the ink or the colored pencil, whatever it is that you're using, your marker, whatever it is. It's just simply there to receive this media that you're applying to it. There are times when you have to press hard or there are times when you need to create a little heavier application of something. But in general, what I like to do with approaching meditative drawing is learning how to relax. And for a lot of people, it's learning how to pull back a little bit, how to, how to allow just the tip of their pen and not the entire edge of their pen to go in contact with the paper, that it's really just allowing it to glide. Now here's the funny thing, is that we draw a lot with ballpoint pens for our regular everyday writing, for writing checks or signing papers or whatever it is. Ballpoint pen does require a little bit of pressure to get the ball to roll. Uh, gel pens will glide regardless of, of the amount of pressure that we put, but a bell, ballpoint pen actually does require a little bit of pressure. A lot of technical pens, which are what I use for meditative drawing, they have a nib, and I'll show you a close-up of this later on in the video. But the nibs here don't require a lot of pressure. They just need contact with the paper. So meditative drawing is, is really about a letting yourself be present in the process. So what I'd like to do is take you through a small exercise. It's actually one of my favorite chapters. It's chapter one <laughs> in this book about meditative drawing because it's the simplest designs that can have the greatest impact on how you approach anything from that point on. It's creating a solid base on how you begin to create your relationship with your pen and your paper and how you look at the world and shapes around you in a completely different way. And so while it may seem very small and simple and technical, it's actually, it's just incredibly important. And it's important enough that I would create this video for you. 
So I hope you'll join me on this little lesson on meditative drawing from the Mandalas and More Meditative Drawing and Coloring book. And if you're interested, go get a copy for yourself. Thanks. Okay, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is the pen that I like to use for meditative drawing. Now you don't have to use a technical pen. It's the one that I prefer, but I would rather you use whatever you have um, rather than waiting for that special something or you'll always be waiting for that special something. So it's more important that you use whatever you have, whether that is a ballpoint pen or a, um, a marker or a colored pencil, whatever that you have. I, I would rather you practice with what you have. And when you're ready and want to move to a technical pen, I want you to know how to hold it. So a technical pen really works best if you can hold it more upright rather than at an angle. When we do our regular handwriting, we, we tend to hold things at an angle, or at least we've been taught to do things at an angle. But technical pens do best if they are more upright. What that does is it allows that the tip of the nib, which is more of a squared off uh, piece of, of felt or ceramic, depending on what you have, makes full contact with the paper. If you begin your drawing at this angle, what you're going to do is actually bend the nib. The visual that I like to have people think of is when women use lipstick on one side of the lipstick only, it creates a divot. Well, something similar kind of happens when you use a technical pen and you're only using one side is that it begins to bend it and it just is not going to last as long for you. So it's really learning how to hold the pen more upright and just make contact with the paper. Because this is not a ballpoint pen, it does not require a lot of pressure downward to create an impression of the ink. It's really learning to hold the pen at a place where it is more upright and just makes contact with the paper. Now I know this sounds very technical and it can be kind of boring, but it actually is very important because what happens is that your mind wants to speed things up and it wants to put them in a way that you have more of a muscle memory for which is often at the angle. So learning how to do slowing down and holding the pen this way can actually be very important. So to begin for a meditative drawing lesson one of the first things I teach is circles. And I know usually people have this idea of circle, well I know how to draw a circle, and you probably do, but I don't know if you know how to draw a circle and be connected to your circle to be mindful in how you draw. So remember our ABCs, you want to adjust your paper and your body in a way that's going to be comfortable for you, and you want to take a breath, just take a breath, just in and out, and then you want to begin to connect your pen and your paper together in a way where you are drawing circles and they don't have to be absolutely perfect but the important part is right here where you started and where you end they need to connect sometimes I've seen people where they do this and they overshoot or I've seen people go where they're fast this is what I would consider kind of an open circle this is not actually a closed circle. This one is not being mindful of where the start position was. So this is not what I want you to practice. This is what I would like you to practice is wherever your start position is, that that is also your ending position. And even if you have a wobbly touch, say your muscles are a little weakened or if you have a little bit of a shake or anything like that don't worry about that because that will actually end up becoming your personal style but this will be more of a circle than this one was with the openness it's about creating that connection the connection where it starts and it ends so even if I drew one and it ended up looking more like an egg it wasn't quite round this will still be more of a circle than this one because that is open so these are the things that we begin to become aware of with meditative drawing. So I'm going to draw my circle here and I'm going to begin to show you how I'd move into a spiral. I'm just going to draw my circle, connect my point of where I started and where I end, and then keep my pen going and create a spiral. Make my circle connect 
keep my pen going. And I can combine my circles, different sizes, next to my spirals. But the important part is that they connect at the beginning and at the end in those same places. Now this is very different when I do my circle. It's, I prefer that people actually have this connection here if they're going to do a spiral and begin to move that place on the inside. If you would like an open spiral, you can start from the inside and move outward. And then you'll have an open spiral here. For those that have an idea of that they're going to do a spiral but then they don't close their spiral, they don't, and they don't close the circle, you end up with an open spiral. So just know that depending on the type of circle that you're trying to create or the type of spiral that you're trying to create, it's that connection to the beginning and the end. And even watching someone just draw a series of circles or a series of spirals can be very relaxing. If you give your body a chance to just try the muscle memory, and I'll show you a couple. This is if I'm going counterclockwise. It's creating a connection to that ending and beginning spot. That's what's going to be more meditative because your awareness then is connected to your shape. And while this seems very silly or simple or technical, this will make a big difference on creating further patterns. The more complicated they get, the more that you begin to create shapes and change your patterns, being aware of your lines where things start and stop will become something of importance later on. So give this a try. It doesn't even take a large piece of paper. It can be a pretty small piece of paper. But try creating your circles with the beginning and the ending points. Don't worry if they look crooked or wobbly. Just give it a try. There you go. So as you can see, the lessons are simple. They're easy to learn. I look forward to getting your comments and hearing about your experience with mandalas and more. From the drawing desk, I'm Cher Kaufman. May you find more inspiration in your days.